and here we have our standard generic ordinary 4x2 base. Nothing special, nothing spectacular. However, even though it might look normal on the outside, what if I was to tell you that below this base we're hiding a basement? Want to know how I did it? Well, I'll show you. Good evening everybody, Flack is back and today I'm going to be showing you how to be building the basement inside your base. It's relatively simple, what I'm going to first do is put down a foundation. Not on the ground, but slightly above the ground, like that. Now I'm going to put another one right next to it over here. And then I'm going to move on to staircases and I'm going to build two down into the sand here. Seems a bit strange, but I promise you there's a reason for this. I'm going to get rid of that, and I'm going to get rid of this. Build another two staircases up and up. Finishing it off with a foundation here. You are left with this disgusting looking behemoth over here. Not to worry though, I'm just going to remove the staircase. What you are left with is literally your two staircases that are leading into the ground and this foundation over here. Now I'm going to build forward. And this is going to be the entrance part of our base. And I'm going to build just two sides over here and a side over here. Fantastic. Okay, I can get rid of this piece here. And what I'm left with now is a footprint for a 4 by 2 So I'm going to come here by the stairs. And because the staircase is going straight into the sand, you can't see it. But you can build up here. Meaning that... Even though this is foundation, and this is foundation, and all of these are foundation, this is not foundation. So, I can use roof tiles, like that. So from here it looks like a normal 4x2. When I change these foundations into stone, this all looks normal. Now remember, this isn't a foundation, this is wall. But because stone is such a good building material, you'd never know that that's wall. The only way you'd know is if you look at the stability, you'll see this foundation is 100%. All foundations are 100% stability, but the wall is 77%. So it might look like a foundation, but it's not. When I change these ceiling tiles, remember these are not floors, these are ceilings. When I change these two ceilings into stone, this entire section of ground looks like just foundation. It looks like a normal 4x2. But when you go inside, you'll notice that this piece is actually empty. So we're going to proceed like normal and on the back side we're going to be placing two staircases up. Well let's go one staircase up. We're going to make this part over here our entrance. I'm going to do that in airlock. I'm going to do a side wall over here. Around the corners here we're just going to wall in like normal. Wall, wall. Now again, panning on the outside, you'll notice that this is the basic footprint for the base. It's going to be a very simple base, but the idea is not to have all of your loot safe up here. This is going to be a disguise. All your loot's going to be underground. So when I go back to my base here, and I start changing all of these to stone, that looks like foundation and floor. No one would know that there is actually a base inside here. So that is superb. Looking good so far. I'm going to turn the rest into stone. Now I'm left with the stone shell of the base itself. I'm not going to do the roof for now. I'll explain why in a bit. But what I'm going to do is show you about the underground vault and what makes the underground vault so safe. Okay, so we're currently inside the underground vault. I'm going to quickly just change this to stone as well. So I'll start by placing two large chests over here. I'll place another large chest over here. And then I'm going to do my furnace and sleeping bag on this end over here furnace if I would like to cook, not necessarily going to. My bag over here and a campfire which is five seconds away from being created is going to go on the other side. I can do a lot of small chests here but I prefer to leave this area empty so that I can actually go here and access my chests. So this is going to be my spawn point. I can use my furnace to cook if I want to. I can cook meat over here and I have three large chests and again I can put smaller chests but that's just going to get in the way because I can't technically stand in here. I'm standing upright now and I can barely move because it's actually a half a foundation, not a full foundation. So this is the inside the basement of my base at the moment. If I zoom out again, there is no way that you can tell that there is a base under my base. Inside my normal base up here is going to be a livable space, don't get me wrong. I'm going to use the space to live. So obviously I can place my, my things if I want to. I can do my tool cabinets, I can authorize, you know, normal things. 
of base of operation, but my valuables are going to be stored under here, under the floor. So I'll proceed to do the, the standard base things, you know, put down my chest, and this will serve as my base. However, the valuables are going to be kept under here. That's going to be the real clincher. Let's put some doors on this base, and then I'll explain to you how you're going to get things to your loot. So as it stands, you cannot enter your base. There is no door to get in here, so you have to physically spawn into your sleeping bag if you want to get here. But you have to have a way how you can pass items above and below the ground. Otherwise, it's going to be impossible to transfer goods from the top to the bottom without breaking the floor. Okay, And we don't want to be breaking the floor because stone is a fucking pain in the tit. So we have to figure out a way how we're going to pass the goods from the top to the bottom without causing too much of a problem. So I'm going to be using one of these. When I place my drop box, I'm going to place it with the door line just below. Let's call it. Look at the hinge on the bottom left. I'm going to make the hinge just clip the floor. There. That should be enough. Jesus, I hope it's enough. Oh, there we go. Perfect. So, if I'm in my underground vault, if I have a valuable item in my chest, for example, let's call it C4 in my chest, and I needed to use it in-game. I would essentially grab it from my inventory, place it in the drop box. I would then proceed, I should probably rename this bunker, change the name, and then I would proceed to kill myself, you know, hashtag suicide. Then I would spawn on my top sleeping bag over here, and then I would come to my thing and I would grab my valuable item. So that's the system you'd use to transfer items between your normal base and then your bunker. I'd put my valuables that I gather inside here, kill myself, and then I would go about spawning into my sleeping bag over here, and then I would take it out here and move it to my valuables chest. Sorry, I have to crouch, it's not a full room. And then I would go about storing it. So that's the basic theory of how we're going to be moving items from the top to the bottom and how this stays hidden. If you look at the outside of the base, you'll notice that there's nothing actually suspicious or there's nothing really telling that there is anything hidden under here. But little do they know that under these two panels over here is a full base. That drop box is unfortunately a bit low, but it has to be low so that it can clip through the floor. But it's going to look slightly suspicious. So what I like to do in this area, just to avoid suspicion, is I slightly, if you will, decorate my area. I'll put down a box uh, just to avoid suspicion so that they actually look at my display more than my hidden box itself. Put in a little bit of wood into this bad boy. So obviously if they were to raid me, they would come in, they would see the drop box, they'd see that I'm a little bit of a role player and they'd proceed to, you know, raid the rest of my base and they would steal the rest of my shit and that is that. However, little do they know that just below here is actually my hidden base with my good shit. Nobody will ever know and you will end up having a lot of loot that will never ever get stolen. I do hope you enjoyed this build. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please leave a like, leave a sub. Flack out. Oh, and before I forget, I just wanted to say a very, very big thank you to Moji. He's a Rust YouTuber. He recently released a video called The Bush Base. And basically, after watching that video, I came up with the idea for this video. So he's the inspiration. What I'm going to do is leave a link to his Bush Base video. He managed to build a hidden base inside a bush. It's amazing. Go have a look. The link is in the description.